We'd like to welcome our audience uh, for this, the uh, final game of the Offs uh, Football Bowl Series uh, between the Cora Colts from Sault Ste. Marie and the Jacob Hespler uh, Secondary School team from Cambridge, Ontario, one of the local uh, teams. And uh, I'm joined by Dave Morrissey. Hey, and Peter. How are you doing? Great. And uh, we're pretty excited that we've had a, a real interesting day when it comes to weather we started off this morning in the rain um, our second game was uh, in wind gales and uh, here we are we've had some snow before prior to game time and uh, we're just hoping that the uh, conditions don't interfere with the, the quality of play out here tonight right yeah well there's you know a little bit of snow on the field but uh, this it seems to have stopped snowing but it's still extremely windy uh, really looking forward to this game. In terms of the matchups, this is one of the ones I was looking forward to the most. Uh, it features two head coaches who played at Wilfrid Laurier University, uh, Tom Ar Annett and uh, Anthony Maggiacomo. So uh, I'm a little torn between who I'm rooting for today. Uh, certainly Tom's been here uh, a lot, and, and Cora really has, has been to offs in the last three years, and I think they've won all three championships they've been involved in, uh, winning the North Bowl twice and... Uh, I think the Central Bowl was the other one that they won, but uh, he certainly has done a great job up in the Sioux. Yeah, both these teams have played in bowl games multiple times. Yep. Um, again, this year, <laughs> Cora finished 6-2, and two, whereas if you count all of Hespler's games, they're actually 12-0, and 0, and so um, this would be quite the season for them to finish with you know 13 victories. So uh, expect a very close game today, though. So Cora will be receiving... To the south end of the of the Guelph Stadium. The ball bounces back into the end zone. It's brought out. A good return to about the 16-yard line, where Core will take the ball first down. Yeah, he was tackled by number 23, uh, Braden Springer who I assume is the younger brother of Quinton Springer, and you're going to hear that name all day today. Quinton Springer is easily one of the top running backs in this province, if not the top running back. Uh, but here we go, Cora on offense. And we start off with a running play, a nice running play. That was number 27, Caleb Thibodeau. And especially with that formation they came out with, seven-man line, three running backs in the backfield. I mean, they're, they're obviously a run-heavy team, even though we haven't seen them play before. No huddle offense here coming there quickly up and on the ball, and they're going to run another play. They like the inside, and they get picked up five. That was number 24, Arwin Shafee. Let's check the re <laughs> replay here. Good block by uh, 27, Caleb Timido on there. So I think we've seen right away this is probably going to be very much a run-heavy team, especially given yeah. the strong wind that they're going into right now. I was just going to say that, Dave, that it's uh, certainly it was, has been a factor all day. Yep. Another good run. Almost broke that free. 27, Caleb Timido with a big run up the middle, about 10 or 15 yards, and that is a big running back. He's going to be hard to tackle. He's going, in this weather, it's going to hurt. Yeah, he, if you try and arm tackle that guy, that's, that's just yeah. not going to work. So it's going to be first down from their own 47. <coughs> Looked like he had jumped, but uh, got back in time. Yeah, and so we had about a nine-yard run there off the left tackle, and I've noticed that all the uh, Cora players are wearing wristbands. So obviously what the coach is doing is sending in a play, probably numbered system, and they're all just looking down at their wristbands, and that's why they're able to run these plays so quickly. Jacob Hessler anticipating a run, and we have a flag. Yeah, so his quarterback sneak got about four yards, but the, when a flag comes out quickly, it tells me the defense is probably lined up in the neutral zone, which happens a lot of times on second and short. You know, the defense is trying to get an edge. Yeah, that's what they called. And so the penalty was declined, and we'll have a first down for Core. They've now moved into the Jacob Hesper 
zone, and it's first down from Jacob Hespler, 50-yard line. Yeah, one of the things about Hespler is uh, they are a very young team, and uh, as good as they are this year, they're going to be back next year, and they'll probably be almost as good. Caleb Thibodeau, another long run there. I mean, so far you can tell that uh, Cora is owning the line of scrimmage yeah. here. They are pushing uh, their opponents back, and they're picking up 8, 9, 10, 12 yep. yards of carry very easily. And Hesper is going to have to find a way to stop that, or it's 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 uh, going to be, be trouble for them. Well, they've already adjusted. You know, the defense is playing in tight. I mean, they are in a good defensive alignment to, to solve or to defend what they're seeing. They just haven't done it very well until yeah, that play until that play <laughs> but as, as we all say that you know you keep running that play until they can stop it yeah yeah and that was ian hall there on the tackle okay. again and they they're uh for it was after a short game about three yards bring it up second seven so we have second down and seven another running play Again, 27, he's a big dude. He kind of reminds me of Jerome Bettis in terms of his uh, his size. And, uh, again, I don't know if did he pick it up there or is he just short? It's going to be just short, I think, Dave. Right. So, again, they're continuing with the, with the no huddle, looking to the sidelines for the signal. And, again, they're just looking down on the wristbands. Most plays, they're going with a seven-man line, very much a run-heavy formation. Yep. And he's got a first down yep. to move the sticks. So that was number 20, 28, Ronan Provenzano. And uh, it was well defended by the defense. He only needed about two yards, got tackled yep. after about three. And they've taken, you know, it's a good time-consuming drive, which is what you want to do yep. when you're going into the wind. You not yep. want to only move the ball, but eating up clock so you can get to that second quarter when you get the win. Yeah, four and a half minutes have gone by here in the first quarter. So that was a good tackle by number 32, Kenyon Dalton, uh, after about a one-yard gain. He's a, he's a very good defensive lineman for Hespler. He's only in grade 11, already getting attention from a lot of university scouts. I anticipate next year, you know, another year in the weight room, another year of football experience will be even better. This is the first second and long I think they've yeah. had. Nice little change. We have a flag. He's knocked out of bounds. So that was a little, that was a little diff different kind of handoff there. It was a fake to yeah. one running back yeah. running left, and they gave it to a second yeah. running back also ru running left. <coughs> Went around the end, easily yeah. picked up the first down, but a flag came out in the secondary yeah. very quickly. It was thrown by the official on the opposite sideline, right. and considering it was a sweep to the left, and the receiver and the ref on the other side of the field threw that. I don't know what, may, what that's going to be. I'm just going to pick it up. Good call. That's, I'd like to see that. Obviously, it didn't have an impact on the play. And I remember that's a point uh, Murray Drinkwalder, uh, head of officials, made a couple years ago. He, you know, he wants people to understand that on plays where something happens on the other side of the field that has nothing to do with the play, they're not going to call that as a penalty unless it's something tremendously agreed. Well, you get the, the URs or stuff like that. <coughs> we have a signal that's a touchdown. Thibodeau. So another another run, uh, primarily to the left. <coughs> Caleb Thibodeau, about a six-yard touchdown run. And uh, Cora just went down the field quite easily. An 80-yard 80, an 80 drive, and it almost took six minutes to, to take. Yeah, I mean, they, they literally rolled down the field yeah. at will, uh, didn't have to pass the ball once, and uh, you can guarantee a Hespler hasn't seen a, a rushing attack like that all year. And even look at that extra point. I mean, <laughs> the extra point is from 10 yards. I don't think it would have been good from 20 because yeah. the way the wind's going to hang that up, the kick's in that direction. That was Ty Koski on the kick. So we're down to 6.33 remaining in the first quarter, and we have the Cora Colts leading 7-0. I 
I really would like to uh, signal out the, the University of Guelph and the job that they have done, the entire staff, in preparing this facility for the nine bowl games over the three days. They've been very, very supportive and cooperative. And yep. uh, hands off to them. And Yeah, absolutely. I can't say enough about the committee uh, led by uh, Johnny Forte. It's all right to come and play one game, as you well know, Dave, but to be here for three days and nine games, it's a, it's a marathon. Oh, yeah. I mean, these kind of events don't happen with a lot of people doing a lot of work yeah. behind the scenes. I mean, you know, different people have ways to complain about different things. But here we go with the kickoff. It's a relatively short kick. A little bit of miscommunication yep, miscommun there. Yep. But he's Nice block. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's out. No, no. Well... So we you had a see? short kick, yep. only about 20 yards. A couple of Hespler receivers kind of battled for it. One guy took it, started running right, and after about getting about six or seven yards, he got hit and he fumbled. So this is turning into a disaster early on for Hespler. Yep. You know, I can understand the short kick with this wind. It just kind of went up in the air and stayed there. If you're Hespler, you really got to force two and out here. You yep. cannot let them drive down the field again. Because Hespler has, a, you know, as good as their running back is that I said, they, are, they do have a good ability to throw the ball. And, you know, they want to show their balanced attack. And if they've got it going in the wind, uh, they won't be able to do that as easily. There's Thibodeau again. Yeah. Well, Caleb <laughs> Thibodeau so far seems to be posing a question that the Hespler Hawks cannot answer. That's another 15-yard run, primarily running to the left-hand side off tackle. Yep. Seems to be where it's been going all day. Yeah. So we have a first down from the 30, going in. You're right, Dave. They've got to find a way of stopping it. And again, their defensive alignment, I mean, they're crowding the box. Yeah. It they're, just shows his power. And, and, and the strength of the offensive line and the technique of the offensive line. Well, that was a good move outside. That was the other running back, Ronan Provenzano. And I liked what he did on that play, Dave. He, he basically just took his time, looked for the holes, put his hand on the back of one of his players, and then and made his move. So it's uh, yeah, patience is sometimes uh, a, a trait that running backs have to possess. Yeah. And in that case, he, he he waited for his hole to develop, and he, he took it to the outside uh, at the end and picked up the first down. And now we got yeah. another first down for Cora. There's another Caleb Thibodeau, another 10-yard run. Again, off the left-hand side, primarily running to the left-hand side, this team. I think maybe he's only had one one run where he, we, he was under five yards. Yeah. It's basically been five or more. Yeah. And second and short. And, you know, we haven't mentioned any of the names of the offensive linemen yet, but like Jacob Brown, their left tackle, number one, which is an odd number for an offensive lineman to wear, uh, is a highly recruited athlete in this province that a lot of teams are – very knowledgeable about even though Cora is so far up north. And he just fights one defender against another and he's in there for their second touchdown of the first quarter. Yeah, Thibodeau five yard run again off left tackle just going behind this basically was probably the strength of the offensive line. Again they're they're pulling a they're pulling a guard out there and uh, but again Thibodeau should have been stopped at yeah. around the four. He just he just just he, keeps himself going. He's a load. You, you can't bring him down with an arm tackle, or you're going to have to have multiple men to the ball. And you got you know it's an old expression. You got to get low. But on a guy like that, if you're tackling up high, he's just going to lower his shoulder and put you on your butt. Ty Koski's going to try to make it a two touchdown lead. I love that name, Ty Koski. Yeah. It's like it makes me yeah. think of classical music. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So with uh, four eighteen to go in the first quarter. Cora has a 14-point lead and will be kicking off yeah, and from I, you the know south what? end of the field. I can guarantee you Hespler hasn't been down 14 to nothing at all this year. Like I said, they are 12-0, uh, and 0, and most of their games, the scores have been uh, lopsided. Their most interesting game was the Quasa final where they played Resurrection. And Resurrection won their bowl game a couple days ago handily. And they beat Resurrection 55 to 35. It was a seven-point game until the last minute when Hespler got two more scores. But uh, they are on offensive uh, firepower, and um, 
most games their defense has been really good too. The, the, the resurrection game was the first time a team had scored a lot of points on them, but I still think they're probably trying to work out what's going on because we haven't been down 14 to nothing before. Short kick like last time. But in all fairness, you know, we've played uh, eight minutes of this first quarter and their offense hasn't been on the field yet. Yep, right. Yep, so now... So now we're going to find out. Yep, and with the short kick, they got good field position. <coughs> They're going to start at uh, their own 51-yard line. So again, this offense is, is led by uh, Quinton Springer. Uh, tremendous running back, very fast, tremendous vision. Uh, bounces off tackles like a pinball. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot of him today. But that being said, this team throws the ball very well too. Well, there it is. So that, so that was a toss to the right. Springer actually almost was caught in the backfield, yeah. but he showed his speed by getting to the corner, and he picked up a 15-yard gain. See, the linebacker shoots the gap there. What number is that? Uh, 56, I think. Drew Esposito. Had he made that tackle, it would have been about a five-yard loss. Looks like we're going to see a, a real game between these two backs for me, both teams. Yeah. That's technically a, a backward lateral, pass. Lateral pass. It's complete, but uh, stopped behind the line. So quarterback Jacob Bauk threw that pass technically backwards to number six, Chase, Chase. Judge. And Chase Judge is a tremendous athlete. Again, only in grade 11. Uh, I, he might be, he's actually a track star. And at the next level, he, I, you know, he's going to be a great, uh, a great athlete. He just has to decide what it's going to be. Is it going to be football? Is it going to be track? He's got options. So we have second down and a long 17 yards for a first down. It's really important that uh, Hesper moves this ball and gets down further into the Cora territory. It's going back to pass. Successful out to the left side. He hit Judge. He hit Judge on the left sideline. He, he, he broke one tackle, picked up a few more yards. It's going to bring up third and about three. I think being down, being down two uh, two touchdowns. I think uh, you've got to go for this. Yeah, technically, sorry, that was Jensen Button who got that one. That was number eight, Jensen Button. I thought there was going to be a flag there, and there was. Yeah, third. I think I, we saw a jump uh, by the Cora. Defensive tackle. It's third and short. Brandon hit Riggin ran a short hook route yeah. and completed the pass to pick up the first down, but there was a flag on the field. It's kind of tough to tell Button and Judge apart. Yeah. Six and eight, they got similar builds. I guess the way we can make sure about this is uh, Judge is wearing the blue sleeves. I have to get used to looking at the monitor. I'm trying to see numbers on the far side of the field, and I can't see that far. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. First down. <laughs> So again, that, that was a pass to Jensen Button. Told you guys, I told you before, even though Quentin Springer is an absolute superstar, this team does like to throw the ball, and they do mix it up, and they have other athletes on the field. Yeah. And well, we've seen this with a couple of passes consecutively yeah. now. And so obviously he likes Buxton, and uh, so it's, we have a first down here from about the 22. Is that a bounds? Yeah, another pass, short yep. pass to Button, and then he took it another 10, 15 yards, and he's knocked out of bounds at the four. So just like he just like Cora drove down the field at Will, Hespler's now doing the same thing. Yeah. And each team has done it in a different way, Dave. Cora went down the field with a run game, and here we've got the passing game. Yeah, like they've had about six plays on offense, and, and Quinton uh, Springer's only touched the ball once, yep. though I bet you he gets it right here. Nope, they're going with, it with the quarterbacks. Got it. So they went with the quarterback sneak from the four-yard line. Uh, not sure about that call. No, I, 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 especially as you say, the athletes that you have. Yeah. Yeah. So he got maybe a yard on that, maybe yeah. a half a yard. Yeah, 
All right, second down and from the four. And we're under a minute left in this quarter. Again, quarter's been flying by, especially when you think about the ground game that uh, Cora's had, keeping the clock continually running. It's Springer in the backfield. There he goes. Yeah, we got the toss to the short side of the field. Toss the short side of the field, and he's tackled very quickly by number one, Jacob Brown. Jacob Brown plays both ways for Cora. Clearly one of their best players. Plays offensive line and defensive line. And sometimes in high school, Peter, when you see the guys playing both ways on the line, there, there may be guys that aren't in the greatest shape that are playing both ways just because you don't have a lot of really big guys. If you look at Jacob Brown over there, he's in good shape. He is in good shape. He, he looks like he's hit the weight room. And he, he looks like he certainly has the stamina to play hard both ways the whole game. And now we got third and goal from the three. Not surprising yeah. you're going for it. Yeah. This is really important, I think, for Hesper to, to put some points on yeah. the board. And okay. he's got it. There's Buxton again. Yeah. So they had a fake handoff to uh, Springer going to the left. Quarterback roll to the right. Good throw by Jacob Bauk to hit Button. Just inside the sideline, there was a DB there that almost made the play. Button did a good job keeping his feet in bounds for the touchdown. So the convert will bring the uh, first quarter to an end. And you know what? That's a really impressive drive because, again, Hesper's a great team. Don't really know if they've had to face much adversity during this year, but being down 13 points quick, they showed they can do that, and they rallied and uh, got a score actually quite easily. And it was important because now they're going to uh, be going against the wind. And they, they're, they're back in the ball game. It's 14-7 uh, to 7 for Cora at the end of the first quarter. Yep, and it'll be interesting to see if Cora does have a passing game. I mean, that first quarter, we didn't see them pass the ball. Might have been just a, a, a function of, A, they, the wind, and, B, they were running it so well, why pass it? But I'm certain we'll see if they do pass the ball at all in this next quarter, given they have the wind. If they have a passing game that's similar to their running game, this is this is going to be a long day. Yeah. And yeah. especially now that they're into the, they've got the wind at their backs. Yeah. I might be thinking though that you know, don't mess with what's working, yep. because they've ran the ball with extreme success. Yeah. And uh, sometimes as a coach, you can get too cute, too smart. Yeah. But if it's working, I mean, I would, why not keep doing it? I agree. And I, and I think it wouldn't be a bad idea that, that, that you are going to show a little bit of your passing game and the, with the wind at your back. Here's the... Oh. 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 So they tried a dribbler Dude. onside kick. And the problem was is it was a little bit short. It didn't go about... It didn't quite go 10 yards. Nope. So the frontline defender, number 59 for Cora... Owen uh, Tricartan made an incredible play. He, he, he knew the other team had to wait. He knew he didn't have to wait. He picked it up and ran the other direction, and uh, he got tackled at the 39-yard line. Cora has great field position. And I think the Hessler players thought the ball would go further because they basically ran past it. Yeah, and the, the problem, the thing is, you, you know, the ball had to be kicked a little harder because if it's a little bit short like that, you're, you're in a really bad position as a kicking team. You probably just fall on it and just say, okay, we don't want things to get even worse. Now they're going to continue with that running game. So that was a little slightly different. They had a fake handoff in the backfield, and the slot back came around and got that. It was number uh, 23, Cole Barbeau. I don't think we've called his name yet. Picked up, still picked up about five yards. And I like, I like the delay that he had on that play. Just, again, just taking a look and seeing where his holes were. And here we go, second down and about f a long four. An eight-man line yep. there. Geez, they follow their blockers well. Yeah, and they're pulling they're pulling at least one offensive yep. lineman on about every play to give them numbers at the point of attack. Here where they got This is like going to be a very close to a first down. It's an eight-man line. The right guard's pulling there, 98, you see him. Actually doesn't do very much, but the rest of the line did a great job on that yeah. play. And he picked up the first down. Yeah. Now they continue to be able to move the ball. They're at the 29. Again, another handoff right up oh, the middle. A, that, an absolutely enormous hole on yeah. the left side of the line of scrimmage there. Like on this replay, let's check this out. Yeah, they're, they're getting great blocks at the point of the attack from the yeah. entire offensive line. 
from the tight end. I dare say, Peter, you and I could have picked up at least five yards ah. on that each. Maybe collectively. But collectively. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but that, he easily got nine and a half yards. Well, obviously they see a weakness there because that's they've been running there all, all evening. Yeah. And here we go. Yeah, it's not just running. And running to the left, definitely. Yeah. So we're here. We got a first down again. And, you know, as is, as is customary, as is the gentlemanly thing to do, I'm quite sure these two teams exchanged film, right? And two coaches that are as, uh, as, as smart as these two guys are, I mean, they'd have a lot of time to look at the film and put together game plans. And um, I think uh, Coach Arnett has found something to take advantage of. Well, that, that was Cole Barbo on the handoff again, getting down from about the 15 to about the 2, but a flag came out early, and that's going to be against the offense. And it's great to see that the core is using a number of different players on these plays. It's just, uh, I mean, Thibodeau is the main man, but they're, they're, they're switching it about. Barbo is, Barbo is, again, a nice runner. Any, any relation to Jim, perhaps? I, I'm, I have no idea. I don't think so. I think he probably would have told us. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. So that's a 10-yard penalty. We're back to the 26. We'll just put Core in a, in a position they haven't been in. It's first and very long. Wonder if we'll see a pass here. No, they just... Great fake. Great fake. fake. Great fake. So... That play was designed to look like a lot of their running plays, a fake handoff to, 20, uh, to Thibodeau to the left. But the quarterback kept it and ran around the left end. So Gabriel Byron, the quarterback, we haven't called his name very much because he's been handing the ball off, but he kept it that time, went around the left end, and picked up about uh, 13 yards. That's right. We got second down and about seven. I thought that was a terrific fake. Uh, oh, yeah. Was well I thought for sure it was going, maybe because we've seen it handed off so many times. But exactly. The course they're going to be all over yeah. the running back. <coughs> okay, so there's that handoff to Thibodeau over the left-hand side. And then when we watch this replay, we're going to see one of the defenders got in there really early. And he went low, but he couldn't get him down. Yeah. You know, there's number 95, uh, Caleb DaCosta, who's a pretty good defensive lineman in his own right. But he could not get him down. And I thought, I thought there the quarterback went a different direction and did a twist before he handed it off. A little misdirection, confused the defense. Yep. And there's the handoff again to Thibodeau, left-hand side. He's in. Not touched. Thibodeau to the house. Touchdown, Colts. So that's three that's drives, three touchdowns for Caleb Thibodeau. Yep. Now, two of those drives have been relatively short fields of only about 50, 55 yards, but still, it feels like they could have gone 80 yards every time if they wanted to. They're just in control right at the moment. And yeah, and again, that, that, that onside, you know, the, the onside kick uh, that uh, didn't work, that, re that really hurt them. Yep. And the kick is up and good. Yep. And so with 8.23 remaining in the first half, it's the Cora Colts, 21, and the Jacob Hessler Hawks, 7. Yeah, and as I said, Cora's 3-for-3 three three with the ball, but, but Hessler's really only had the ball once. That's it. Right, they had the ball the one time. And moved down the field. So we're, right. we're going to see now them on offense yep. going against the wind. Yeah. Because after Cora scored the first time, remember, they kicked off yeah. and, and Hespler fumbled the kickoff. That's exactly. And so Hespler went bang, bang, two touchdowns really quick. So let's see what Hespler can do into the wind. I think, you know, the, the story of all nine games, the majority of nine games, a lot of them have been on the on the ground and, and, all, and they've really been short. I mean, the games have been over pretty quickly because of that. Yeah. Well, again, I don't care what kind of a passing offense you have. If you're not prepared to run the ball in cold weather, you have a problem. There's the kickoff. That was. So that was a very short kick by Cora. Not surprising given. Well, no, they have the wind. They got the wind Sorry. at their back. <laughs> yeah, so it was a very short kick. Uh, it was fielded around the 40-yard line. We got about a two-yard return.
Well, I hope that uh, I'd like to see Jacob Hesper uh, move the ball down the field. There's a handoff to Quinton Springer, number 34. Got about seven yards going straight up the middle. That's only his third touch of the game so far, which, again, into the almost, almost, you know, a thir you know, uh, halfway into the second quarter would be a very strange thing to say about him because he gets the ball a lot, but they haven't had they haven't had the ball to give it to him. And you certainly, as you said earlier, Dave, you can certainly see his athleticism. Yeah. So they've run that play a couple of times where uh, they have uh, the receiver running that quick slant, and that time it was just slightly overthrown. It's going to bring up third and three and brings up an interesting decision for Hesper. Yep. Interesting. It was a pretty long pass into this wind. and uh... Well, this, this, this is going to be a huge play here because, y you know, you got third and three at your own 49. If you punt it, how far is it going to go, right? So Not very I, you know, far. We I, haven't seen... I think Kickers I, kick the ball very far into this. Oh, they're going to get called. Oh, and, boy. And even though he dropped the pass, they're going to get a first down here. Yeah, it looked like Cora jumped. Which is huge, you know, Dave. Just like you said, you know, it would have been an incomplete pass. The ball would have been turned over. And you know what? I, if, if they get down three touchdowns, that might be too much to yeah. come back from, even to, to say that so early in the game. Offside against the defense. First down, Jacob Hesler. So. Vito Corrali, our head referee, signals uh, the play in. First down from the 54-yard line. Back to pass. Oh, hand it off. I'm so sorry. delayed handoff there, draw play, and uh, they did not fool anybody with that. He was quickly tackled by number 60, 69 there, Marcus Graham. It almost looked like he lost his footing a little bit. Yeah. Should be an interesting call here on second and 12. Well, if they pick up any sort of gain, even four or five yards, I'm pretty sure they'll go for it on third down again. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Incomplete pass. So the quarterback faked the pass to the left. He turned and fired a screen pass to the right to number 28, uh, Brandon Riggin. It was dropped, and, you know, it was very close to – Almost being backwards. Yeah. It was forward by just yeah. about a yard. But now it, was, it brings up third and 12. It was good that the officials uh, whistled it dead. Yeah. Third and 12, and it looks like they're going for it, which, again, may sound bizarre, but if you knew how strong the wind here was, you really can't argue with this decision. But I think they're going to think about it a little longer. Yep. Call timeout. Oh. Actually, the referee pointed to Cora. So... I don't know why Cora would call it. Well, no. I can, uh, yeah, Cora called timeout. They wanted to make sure they got the right defensive alignment. And you're right. You know, the weather, the, that wind is still blowing very, very strong, although we had heard that it was supposed to die down, but it certainly doesn't show any indication that's going to do that. No, the goalposts are actually tilted forward. Yep. So it's not just the flags on the top of the goalposts that are blowing. The actual posts are tilted forward, so... And when you look at that snow moving, it's it's really moving. Yeah. I think we have to take our hats off or clap our hands for this very good crowd here for this game. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to sit on one of those benches. <laughs> but they're they're resilient. Yep. They're tough. So yeah, they're coming out here with the offense. So as we said earlier, it's third down. For Hespler, and they've got 12 yards to go, and uh, they, they, they really need to get a first down here without turning the ball over. Quick kick by the, punt, by the quarterback, and the receiver on the right side was onside, so if he gets this, it's going to be a live ball. Oh. Okay, you know what? I was actually just thinking that maybe that's what they might do. Yeah. 
So the quarterback was in the shotgun. He punted it downfield. The receiver on the right-hand side of the field was onside. The punt goes to the returner. He fumbles it. It bounces straight up, and then he got it off the bounce. But had it bounced a little differently, Hespler would have got that. Pretty interesting. That's the longest kick we've had to today, and it was a quick kick by the by the quarterback. By the quarterback, and we have a flag on the play that that uh, came out after the play was was over. Yeah, you know what? I that was about a thirty-yard punt into the wind. Yep. That's an, that's great. I think it was uh, some words were exchanged. That's that. It's an objectionable conduct against against Jacob Hespler. That kind of negates the great punt to a certain yep. extent. So you got just under six minutes left here, and Hespler absolutely has to get a defensive stand here. Just, you know, even if, for nothing else, to develop some confidence because defensively they, they must be wondering yeah. themselves, can we stop these guys? Twenty-five yard run there over the left hand side. Again, we're seeing a, a fake handoff to uh, Thibodeau, and then they gave that to number 28, Ronan Provisano. So again, it's three different guys in the backfield getting touches, and, you and know, all, all of them are having success. And, and you know, Dave, I watched the line on that play, and they're not giving an inch. Yeah. That offensive line that, that Hesper just can't get through. No. Another handoff. Thibodeau running over the right-hand side that time, getting about 10 yards. Now, Cora played Huron Heights uh, in an exhibition game earlier on in the year, and Huron Heights beat them 14-13. to 13. And I think you could, I can definitely say that the two teams in this province with the best offensive lines are Huron Heights and Cora. I mean, both those teams really blow guys off the ball, tremendously strong players. I know Huron Heights has a very successful off-season weightlifting program. I wouldn't be surprised if Cora has the same thing, too. Oh, jeez. Thibodeau with another run up the middle. Bricks, a couple of tackles. Showed a little bit of nimbleness there. You were here yesterday, Dave, for that Huron Heights uh, Wilford Laurier game. I, would you say the same thing about Laurier's front line? Oh, yeah. It's certainly a great team. Certainly not taking away anything from them. Uh, and, I, and I do think, you know, yesterday was the battle of, of the two best teams in the province. And uh, after I thought that before the game and even after seeing it, I still think that. Uh, two tr great teams, and I think if those teams played each other ten times, they'd be five and five. And probably every one of those games we decided with in less than a touchdown. Oh yeah, God. I mean, and, and that's what made it compelling football. I mean, if you're on those teams a lot of the times, frankly, it must get boring if you're winning fifty to nothing, sixty to nothing. You know, they say metal sharpens metal, and uh, they, I think, they brought out the best in each other. So there's another good run on first down, picked up about seven yards. And we're coming down to the um, three-minute warning. That was, a, that was a nice open field tackle by Owen Pavia, but the only problem was it was after the first down was made. So, Vito Corrali waves out. The, uh, the clock stops the clock at three minutes. Three minute warning. And Hespler hasn't found a way yet to stop this this running attack of Coras and not at all. So we had a run to the right hand side there again, Thibodeau. Probably had about 20 carries this, this, this game so far. And he picks up about five or six yards. Again, in terms of what Hespler is doing on defense, I mean, they're, they're stacking the box. They're putting a lot of men in there. They're, they're basically committing to defensing the run. It's just they haven't been able to do it yet. Oh, there we have it. 28 Ronan Provisano run to the right-hand side. 
looked like he was stopped at the one, but he spun off the defender and scored. So at 2.30 left to go in the first half, the Colts. With this extra have point. Op have opened up a, a commanding lead. Yep, and it'll be up 28-7 if they make this kick. Kick is up and good. Surprised they didn't call offside. Right. It would have been against. Uh, it would have been against uh, Jacob Hesper, yeah. regardless. But uh, again, with 2:30 left to go, we have a, a three-score lead. Yeah. So looking at my sheet here, I, I just realized Caleb Thibodeau is only in grade 11. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Well, if any of the OUA scouts here didn't know about him before today, they certainly know about well, him today. And he's going to be getting a lot of phone calls for a couple of years. Be curious to know if he's if, if he's a, a track athlete. <laughs> he plays any other sports as well. Well, I don't know if he's a hundred meter runner, but maybe shot put or well, discus I, that's or what something I thought like that. One, one of the throwing <laughs> events. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's. End over end, and the uh, Jacob Hesper's. Oh, breaking some tackles. Excellent job by number 17 Eight. for Hesper. That's Liam Marsden. Took a kick at the 30 yard line, broke about five or six tackles, and got to midfield. Or, sorry, his own 50. Yep. And Hesper needed that. They, they really did. And, and Maybe that'll give them a little bit of a spark. They, you know what, I think they absolutely have to score a touchdown before the half here. I mean, they do get the ball to start the second half. So if they can go back-to-back -back scores. Yeah, and I don't think they have any other choice but to take that, take the ball in the second half. I don't think normally if it was close, you'd take the win that you're back in the fourth. But in this yeah. case, they need the ball as many times as they can get it. Yeah, that's a good point. I was just assuming they'd take the ball. But with the wind, you might want the wind advantage. But they can't afford to fall behind further. So no. I think they will just take the ball. No. Here's Springer. And he's knocked out of bounds. So we had a little misdirection in the backfield, and Springer got the handoff, got the corner. Moved the ball up to their 41-yard their line of uh, Cora. Yeah, about a 25-yard run. Yep. Got around the left sideline. We got lots of time here in this before the end of the half to, for them to put some points on the board. Yep. In the last three minutes of again of, of each uh, of the second and fourth quarters, the clock runs a lot slower than the rest of the game, so there is time to do more damage on offense. It's one of the great things about Canadian football, the last three minutes and how many things can happen and how a game can change in that period yeah, of time. Yeah, like just think of the Great Cup yeah. recently. <laughs> oh, wow, I think that's a face mask. Yeah. Certainly oh. looked like that. I guess not. So Springer ran to the left there, was tackled immediately at the line of scrimmage by number eight, Ethan Scott. Ethan Scott. Let's see the replay here. Nope, was not a face mask. Got him by the jersey. And if you see on the on the replay there that the uh, the player turned his back to the official, so that it was out of his view. Yeah. Here we go. This is a big play. Second down and nine. He's gonna go with the pass. He's wide open. Completed at the 30-yard line. Receiver Still breaks some tackles, and he's down inside the 20. Great play, great play, clutch that is play. That Liam Marsden, the same player who made the uh, good kick return a little while ago. Clutch Make, play. It's two big plays. Make lots of time here on the clock with 1.42 <coughs> remaining. Yep, they don't have to rush. They don't have to hurry. I mean, literally, they have tons of time. I still think they have their two timeouts as well. Um, we don't know who, who called that timeout. It says 0-0, zero, zero, so it looks like both teams have used both. But you know what? They don't even need him. They got a, they got yep. 90 seconds left, 20 yards to go. Toss to Springer. So the defense defended that very well as a toss to Springer to the left-hand side. He only got about two yards or about three or four core defenders there, including number 54, Jonah Pavoni. Clock is running with 118 and counting. Again, lots of time. A 
certainly think that they're going to pass. Yeah. Well, oh, fooled us. Shouldn't say things like that. Well, they did have a, a formation that looked like it was going to be a pass, but uh, Springer came over in motion, took the handoff in the backfield, and ran it for about three yards. They were expecting more from that. They got third and five, third and six. There's absolutely no way they kick a field goal. Even if, nope. if there wasn't a win, they wouldn't kick a field goal. They need a touchdown yep. here. So we got three receivers to the right, two to the left. Pistol formation, Springer's behind the quarterback. Steps up in motion towards the line as the ball snapped. He's going into the end zone with it. He's got a receiver back there. Touch, and we got touchdown. a touchdown. Touchdown. So Jacob Bauk throws deep to Chase Judge. Uh, that's exactly what they needed. Yep. That's exactly what they needed. He got yep. deep, single coverage, good throw. Actually, the safety came over, but it was far too late to help. And uh, Judge did a good job yeah. hanging on it's the a ball. Great, a great pass right on the target. Two defenders. Wow. Converts good. So again, that's huge. They needed that. And again, given they get the ball again first, or we think, we think they'll get the ball. <laughs> First in the third quarter because we think they're going to want to get the ball instead of choose the wind in the fourth. And you think, Dave, that they moved that ball down into the wind uh, in, in, in less than two minutes and got the score. I think that's going to be a real incentive for them going into their dressing room at halftime. Yeah, because even Down that, two rather than three. Yeah, and even that throw, that with the line of scrimmage was a 20-yard yeah. line. He threw it 10 yards deep in the end zone, so the quarterback showed he can get it that yep. far. So they just can't give up anything here. Yeah. Right? They, they, they can't give up anything here. Like, I, you know, I think they should kick it as deep as they can. They can't give up a big return because if somehow Cora was to get another touchdown in this quarter, it would just take away all the it would be devastating, momentum right? that they just built. Yep. yep. be devastating. Now, Cora's certainly expecting an onside kick. They have 11 players uh, up close, close to the ball. A front line of six and another five guys only about five, ten yards behind them. They only have one guy deep. Our kicker is asking for someone to hold the ball uh, because of the wind. So I think he's going to kick it deep. But yeah. I, I think mean, there's only 37 seconds left yeah. in this in the half, so you... Oh, my God. Oh, there's a fumble. Oh, jeez. So... I think Cora's is recovered. That was a bizarre kick. Yeah. Like, it looked like he was trying to kick it deep, but it looked like, like he, he hit it so it. poorly. It looked like... <laughs> it looked like... Kind of like maybe you might do on a chip shot from the green. He flubbed it. It only went about nine yards. Yeah, the Cora guy got it, fumbled it, but fell on it. Yeah, right at center field. It just shows the ten yards that it must be kicked. Yeah, so I think if, if you're Cora and you do have a... Uh, a passing attack you might try a pass here because with 36 seconds you don't have time at least i don't think you'll have time to run it down the field and get another touchdown unless you have some good runs they may have three plays have here time for three plays maybe okay here's a fake and the quarterback's keeping it himself running wide so they tried that play to the left the one time they had success with it that time owen pavia made a good tackle limiting the quarterback to no gain and again, once the quarter, but once the whistle, uh, ref blows in, it blows the whistle in. This clock's going to be running right now. I find it interesting. Ty Koski's <laughs> way over there on the left-hand side and just runs his pattern every play and never comes over to his side. Yeah, maybe this is the time they throw to him. Oh, no, nope. we got this direction. Yep. Oh, he's just got to break one tackle. He's going to score. He's running down to the 15, the 10, the five. He gets in he the end zone. Shown. Touchdown. Disaster just, for Hespler. Just like you said, Dave, before, that they cannot afford to, to give up what they just gained. So misdirection play. Ronan Provisano comes from the right across to the left. Excellent blocking, not only at the line of scrimmage, but even downfield by that receiver you were talking about. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he does a great job, you know, just beating the last couple of defenders yep. to the ball. Like I thought 24 there. Uh, Ian Hall might have had him at the five-yard line, but he toughed through it and... Boy, yeah. that would be a poster at the end there, the way he was celebrating with the fallen defender at his feet. Wow. What and a huge play. Convert is good. So, yeah, Ty Koski, 5 for 5 on the converts. And also, let's give him credit for a Blake 
great block downfield springing that touchdown. Yeah, he's been running that pattern very nicely down that left side and uh, nothing to this date. And then all of a sudden something comes to his side and he right. makes that block. Playing wide receiver in an offense when you don't throw the ball is not fun. Right. <laughs> I, I, in high school, we had a running – when I played in the Niagara region, we had four downs. And we had a running back that easily averaged about 15 or 20 yards a carry. His name was Mike Smolega. He's in South Carolina now. Shout out to you, Mike, if you were listening. But anyway, Mike would get so many yards, we'd never pass the ball. We'd <laughs> pass the ball in practice. So that's what it was fun for me. I'd get to catch the ball in practice. But during the games, it was like, no, we're just going to run, 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 run. So – but, you know, hats off to Koski there for throwing a good block because you can easily get bored out there with yep. when they're not throwing it to you. And Here's he's re- running that pattern every play. Yeah. He seals to the inside there again. He doesn't yep. put him on his butt or anything nope. like that. He just seals but he him. does just enough to keep him inside. So, again, that is very disappointing for Hespler. I mean, you get that touchdown right before the half. You know, you could you could have gone in the locker room with some mem- momentum, feeling really good about yourself, or somewhat good about yourselves, and now you just it's that's a dagger. Yeah, and you know, and Hessler works so hard for their touchdowns, and and Carr just seems to do it at ease. I don't think they can stop him at this point. Like, I mean, they are running with such ease. Hey, I would be, you know, I, I hate to say it, but I I, I don't know if Hessler can can stop that the run. I mean, they've had the ball five times, they've scored five touchdowns. And not like they it was like short, like they've moved the ball down the field. I think they had one third and one. So yeah. here's a short kick off a dribbler that goes about 35 yards. Oh, interesting. Well. Hespler kicks it back, hoping that one of their onside players will get it. Interesting strategy, but uh, the uh, alert Cora re- returner did fall on the ball. But I bet you a lot of people haven't seen that play before. No, I was just going to say it's been a long time since I saw it. That yeah. So we come to the end of the first half uh, with the Cora, Cora Hawks in a commanding position here, leading 35 to 14. Yeah. So we'll see what adjustments uh, Jacob Hesper can make at halftime to see if they can get back into this ball game. And the halftime break will be in 15 minutes, and we'll see you around then. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. When I was in high school, my team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. Now I'm coaching and I see myself in my team. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. It begins with the ball. You see, a ball is not just leather and rubber. A ball is the seed that communities grow around. We're talking split-second moments that become indelible memories. It creates lifelong friendships. It's a reason for people to celebrate. A ball isn't just a ball. It's a life lesson. It's a tool you use to pursue your best. It's how you earn your greatest victories how you learn to deal with failure. It's a test that you pass. It's a dream that you catch. It's a future you hold in your hands. It's not just a ball. Baden, the official ball of you. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games when you forget you're a high school student for a while. 
But now I'm behind the bench, I'm picking up new things from my students. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. I look at my students, the joy on their faces, and that's why I coach. for your true calling with the Canadian Armed Forces. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. That's why I coach. Ignite your athletes. Empower your coaches. Rally your community. Support every team with one solution with the Huddle Athletic Department Package. You put all your school's coaching tools under one roof. From recording to analyzing to sharing, with your Huddle AD Package, you cover every angle. Equal access means equal opportunity. An equal opportunity means full potential. Let's take your department to the next level. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. My team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I do. That's why I coach. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. When I was in high school, my team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices, it was everything in between. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. Now I'm coaching, and I see myself in my team. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. It begins with the ball. You see, a ball is not just leather and rubber. A ball is the seed that communities grow around. We're talking split-second moments that become indelible memories. It creates lifelong friendships. It's a reason for people to celebrate. A ball isn't just a ball. It's a life lesson. It's a tool you use to pursue your best. It's how you earn your greatest victories. How you learn to deal with failure. It's a test that you pass. It's a dream that you catch. It's a future you hold in your hands. It's not just a ball. Baden, the official ball of you. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. But now I'm behind the bench, I'm picking up new things from my students. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. I look at my students, the joy on their faces, and that's why I coach.
your true calling with the Canadian Armed Forces. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. That's why I coach. Ignite your athletes. Empower your coaches. Rally your community. Support every team with one solution with the Huddle Athletic Department Package. You put all your school's coaching tools under one roof. From recording to analyzing to sharing, with your Huddle AD Package, you cover every angle. Equal access means equal opportunity, and equal opportunity means full potential. Let's take your department to the next level. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. My team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force in my students' lives. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I do. That's why I coach. Every impact leads to a clearer vision, a truer fit. When I was in high school, my team felt like a family. We were a family. We did everything together. It wasn't just drills and early practices. It was everything in between. We had so much fun, and it was our coaches who made it happen. Now I'm coaching, and I see myself in my team. They're learning, working hard, and building their own friendships, just like I did. That's why I coach. It begins with the ball. You see, a ball is not just leather and rubber. A ball is the seed that communities grow around. We're talking split-second moments that become indelible memories. It creates lifelong friendships. It's a reason for people to celebrate. A ball isn't just a ball, it's a life lesson. It's a tool you use to pursue your best. It's how you earn your greatest victories. How you learn to deal with failure. It's a test that you pass. It's a dream that you catch. It's a future you hold in your hands. It's not just a ball. Baden, the official ball of you. I remember the tournaments, the championships, the ride to road games, when you forget you're a high school student for a while. But now I'm behind the bench, I'm picking up new things for my students. There's so much you can learn on the field that you simply can't learn in the classroom. I look at my students, the joy on their faces, and that's why I coach. for your true calling with the Canadian Armed Forces. The friendships we formed, the character we built, that's what I remember. I don't want to be just that guy with the clipboard and whistle. I want to inspire my students, like my parents and coaches did for me. I still look up to them, and I want to be that positive force 
in my students' lives. That's why I coach. Ignite your athletes. Empower your coaches. Rally your community. Support every team with one solution with the Huddle Athletic Department Package. You put all your school's coaching tools under one roof. From recording to analyzing to sharing, with your Huddle AD Package, you cover every angle. Equal access means equal opportunity, and equal opportunity means full potential. Let's take your department to the next level. The friendships. Welcome back, everybody, to the the final half of the 2022 Officer Football Festival Bulls. I hope you enjoyed the first half and I had a, a bit of a, a break. We had to try to keep warm here. It's cold. And uh, as I say, entering into the third quarter, the second half of this game, the the Cora, the Cora Hawks, Cora Colts, Cora Colts. Have a commanding lead, 35 to 14. And they have, uh, Jacob Hessler is elected to take the ball. They'll have the wind here in the third quarter. It's a squibbler down to the 35, fumble the ball and he's down. Yeah, he no, took a knee while he was trying to recover it, so the ball's dead there. <coughs> so it goes without saying Hespler is going to have to come out here and score, but more importantly, they're going to have to show they can get a stop. They've shown they can move the ball. They have to show they can play defense, too. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Dave. It's uh, five, five possessions for, for Cora and five five scoring plays and uh with relative ease yeah and you know what i'll give uh core also credit for holding 
Uh, Quentin Springer in check so far. Although, as we said earlier, he hasn't had many touches. Right. But here he goes. Yep, I was just going to say, here he goes. Here he goes for about 20. So when I say held him in check, he still probably had 50 or 60 yards. That's right. But, you know, he's used to getting probably a couple hundred and a half. So. And I think that's indicative of the fact that they haven't had the ball that much. They haven't had the ball that much. That's too. And they've been forced and they've been forced to maybe pass a little more than they wanted to because they're falling behind so so quickly. And they've been very successful with their pass. It's, it's allowed them to move down the field. But we have first down here from the 52. Empty backfield. Oh, wow. I think that was a mix-up. Neither neither people out there in the, on the side, the flanks, uh, well, we seemed had, to know where the ball was. We had two receivers in, in the exact same spot. Yeah, right. <coughs> okay, so clearly that was a screen to the wide receiver, but the running back in motion there actually threw a block before it was complete. So that actually should have been a flag as well as an incomplete yeah. pass. Ryan Stewart flanked out here to the right side. Almost an a great catch. Yep, an incomplete pass. So I think it's it's pretty early here for them to be going for this. Although you <laughs> might say they should be. Well, you know what? They're going to try and uh, take advantage of the wind and hopefully get a very long punt and pin them deep. I think they're even though you might be inclined to go for it, it is third and ten. You, pr you probably can expect at least a 40-yard kick. High school punter, I'm going to say 25 or 30 is good. Add on the win, so let's see if they get even more than that. It's off the side of the foot, but it's still pretty good. It's going to pick it up at around the 23. And he gets the ball up to almost the 40. So the line of scrimmage was the 52. Kicked it down to the other team's 22, and they advance it to about the 40, for about 38-yard 38 38-yard line. Well, here we go. We'll, you know, we'll have a chance to see if uh, Hespler has made any adjustments to uh, this potent offense uh, from Sault Ste. Marie. And again, uh, as someone asked just before half, they did not throw a single pass in the first mm -hmm. half. Well. 28 busted up the middle. About a 15-yard run. He got into the secondary before he was tackled by a couple of defenders. One of them was Chase Judge. <coughs> We'd like to see the, the Hesper players uh, get something going here so they can get their fans into this game. It's a pretty quiet crowd right at the moment. Yeah, but the turnout is great. It's excellent for a cold, windy night. <coughs> First and 10 at the... 52 yard line or 50 their own 53 another handoff so Thibodeau looked like he was stopped after yeah. about a three yard game but he just kept on moving forward he fell forward and he ended up with six I'm gonna give hats off to the 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 gentleman holding the sticks uh, <laughs> I know that one gentleman has uh, been here for all nine games. And he, he's insane is basically yeah. <laughs> what he is. I mean, he's got to grip the, the, the number, the down indicator, just to keep it from flapping, <laughs> flapping to the wrong down. Good cut back there by the running back. Thibodeau picks up another first down. But as I say, these, these uh, people are here uh, loving to be at, at offs of football and um, uh, to be here for nine games, it's pretty incredible. Our yeah. game officials are coming from all across the province. Uh, it's a privilege for them to be here. Yeah. Here's someone that hasn't touched the yeah, ball yet. That's say. So we kind of had a slot reverse there kind of shocked us here someone different getting the ball number 83 and there is no number 83 on the yeah. roster a phantom whoever he was he got seven yards <laughs> oh Thibodeau wow. with the ball again he's hammered yeah. by number 40 but I still think he picked up the first down. 
Tyler hit. Hardy with the hit. We have an injured player on the field from Hesper. Yeah. And our snow has begun to fall again. Yeah, it's just kind of blown just around in the air. I don't think it'll stick no. on the ground. I was just going to say it's just kind of blown around in circles. And that looks like a shoulder injury mm -hmm. based on the way his arm is extended there. I guess this is what you call the final game of the football season in, in Canada with the Grey Cup is now over, the, the Vanier Cup is over, and this is the last game of the awesome bowl games. Yeah, well, there actually is. I'll, I'll give a shout-out to the city of Hamilton. They have a, an all-star game. Oh, really? Uh, with Hamilton players, and it, I believe it is on It's Friday or Saturday, uh, and they've done that every year. Uh, so... Technically, this isn't the last game. Okay. This is the last game of great significance. But uh, anyone looking for a little more of a football fix, I know one of our scouts, Aaron Rudland, uh, will be attending that game. And, and are these players from just the Hamilton area? Or yes, are they yeah, just, just the city of Hamilton. I, I believe it, it's the Catholic players and the public players. Okay, number 11 was the player that was injured. That's Owen Pavia. He's getting up, but he's coming to the near sideline, yeah. which tells me he, um, something with the head. Maybe the head, or he's walking under his own power. So it's. I think you're right. Concussion. Do we yeah. have a concussion protocol? Yep. Okay. I think that's what they they will be taking him into the tunnel and uh, having a little chat. Okay. Before they allow he just him. Just kind of lifted his arm and waved to yep. the stands, like it's like, okay, mom, I'm I'm okay. okay. Don't worry. Because yeah. you can imagine if mom's in the crowd, she's. She might be running down there, too. Now here we go. Again, first down from about the 32. Again, that... that uh, misdirection. Misdirection. 28 up the middle for about 20 yards. Gets down to about the 11-yard line. I, you know what? I really want to see the statistics when this game yeah. is over. Exactly how many yards rushing each of these guys is going to end up with. Feels like Thibodeau at this rate might end up with over 300. Provisano might end up with over 200. But well, one statistic right now is no yards passing. No yards passing, yes. Correct. <laughs> As, as our people next door are saying that uh, Cora has yet to uh, kick the ball, obviously, because they've had the possession. This is their sixth possession, I think, and uh, yeah. and uh, have scored on every play. No punts, no passes. Yeah. Second, But they have a second and long. We haven't yeah. seen this very often. No. Second and nine from about the 10-yard line. Hand off to Thibodeau, up the middle. He's tackled. Tackled around the seven, but he keeps his momentum going. Falls down at the three. It's going to bring up third and two. And again, I bet you they've only had two or three third downs the whole game. Yeah. And you know what? Of course they're going to go for it. Yeah. I, I, Even if you are stopped, I mean, the other team's got to drive 107 yeah. yards. So this is a no-brainer, too. But if you're Hespler, you have to make this play. Yeah. We have a timeout. Coach running on the Coach field. Coach running on the field. The refs don't see. Oh, the refs do see it. Coach basically... Ran 20 yards onto the field. Ran down the wrong way. Should have gone down to the side with it. Side judge, yeah. Side judge. And oh. uh. So, a couple of things about Cora here. So, again... They only played in a three-team league, uh, so they only had a four-game regular schedule. They went three and one. They they beat Superior Heights twice. They split with a school called St. Mary's, which is very impressive to me. St. Mary's held yep. them to 14 points. Then they beat played St. Mary's a third time, won in the playoffs, and then in through some more northern regional games, they really beat up on a couple of other schools. But other than Huron Heights, who beat them 14-13, and St. Mary's, who beat them 15 to 14. They seem to have run over everyone they played this and year. And their final two games that you have there, Lowell and Algonquin are from North Bay. Okay. So up there in, in Nasa, you have the three areas, uh, the Sioux, 
Sudbury and, and North Bay, and they have this interesting way that they determine their winner. Okay. So they're kicking a field goal yeah. here. I, I wondered if that might be the right thing to do with the score the way it is, and knowing that you're dominating this game is uh, get put some points on the board, but you don't have to try to embarrass the other team. I don't know about that, Peter. It's the third <laughs> quarter. It's, it's, it's the third quarter, and I get the spirit of that sentiment. <laughs> but most of the football coaches that I know I, uh, would I, not be having mercy. No, I know that. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a mercy guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think we both... You were talking about church earlier on today, yeah. so that's, that's, that's not a surprise. I, th I think we both would acknowledge that, uh, that I mean, unless something really happens significantly, that yeah. uh, CORE is in command of this particular game, and, and there shouldn't be any reason why they shouldn't win it. Right. So but they, any help? Yeah, so they beat those two schools from North Bay by a combined score of 98 to 20. Yep. 98 to 28. So tell me what what's special about what they do there. Well, every year, like they have, they, they play within their own their own uh, centers, and then they have a playoff. And every year it rotates. So okay. the the NASA final one year would be in the Sioux, the next year it would be in Sudbury, and then in North Bay. Okay. But you know the first teams that you you mentioned in there, Superior Heights and St. Mary's, they've been here before. Okay. Superior Heights particularly. Yeah. Uh, good football programs in both of those centers. Yeah. I've never been further than North Bay, so to me, everything further than that is all one big blob <laughs> that I've never known. Like I think one of the kids that comes from for the, on Monday, St. Pat's, was from Thunder Bay. Yep. I had no idea how far it was from Thunder Bay to Outside, like the Sioux. You need to go for a drive. Yeah, well, that, not that much of a drive. <laughs> not that much of a drive. It would be equivalent to going from Toronto to Ottawa. Oh, five hours from, from, from Sudbury to, to the Sioux. Okay. Maybe a little bit longer. And then how much farther to Thunder Bay? A long way. <laughs> okay. So it was first and five after penalty. Uh, then now we have a sack. Looked like number one, Jacob Brown. But it's a beautiful drive from, from the Sioux to Thunder Bay because you're all around Lake Superior. Okay. But you're out in the middle of nowhere. Is it kind of right. like in space? No oh, one can hear yeah. you scream if you're between uh, lots of Savory and Thunder Bay. Get lots anywhere. of rocks, lots of trees, and, and deep water. Oh, okay. Uh, don't run out of gas. No. Okay, he's back to pass, and he's scrambling. Can't find an open receiver. He picks up about seven, eight yards. Short of the first down, still needed about another three or four yards, and they're certainly going to go for it. Uh, this is a pretty important play. I, I, I hope that they're able to be successful on this play because it would be uh, pretty difficult if they turn the ball over here. Yeah. We still are under five minutes now in the third quarter. Oh, oh, they may have jumped it's early. not going to help. Fumbled this. snap. Does a good job picking up. Oh, and completes it downfield. He's going to get a first down out of that. Excellent job by the quarterback. It was a low snap, bounced on the ground. He picked it up, threw it downfield quickly to number 28. Uh, Brandon Riggin made a big reception. Absolute necessity, that play. You can hear the wind howling in oh, this booth. Geez, yeah. First down. Maybe we should pay the rent in this place <laughs> and maybe just refurnish the booth a little bit. Hand off to Springer. Good, tough running on over the right-hand side. Tackled by four players. It's too bad that we haven't had a chance to watch this young man run a little bit more. Yeah. No, like I said. I've heard so much about him before before this game. and Yeah, he's really special. Even still there, I mean, that, that was a good, tough run. He really earned yep. it. He got seven yards, and it took like four guys to bring him down. Second and four. It's going long. Oh, oh, oh geez. Too bad the guy was open. Oh, very late flag, roughing the passer. So he had a deep pass down the middle, intended for Liam for Marsden. Liam Marsden, Marsden, slightly overthrown. But, but he was wide nothing. open, though, wasn't he? Oh, he totally was. Slightly overthrown. Uh, it shows you even when you're throwing with the wind, yeah. it can be difficulties, right? But that was uh, uh, roughing the passer at the very end there. Flag came out late. So it's going to be a first down for 
for Hesper, which is great. They're going to move the ball down into the car end of the field, and they're going to have first down. A mix up in that backfield as he fumbled the ball. He's driven all the way back to center field where it's going to be a long. Yeah, they were trying to do some misdirection yeah. in the backfield yep. there. An unfortunate fumble, and that's a big loss of about 14, 14 yards. And you got to go deep into the playbook to find that play <laughs> for second and 24. They're up over the ball. Pistol formation, yep. three receivers at the top, two on the lower side of the field. Back to pass. Dave, maybe you can explain to our audience what a pistol offense is. Well, I mean, I'm sure people have heard the shotgun offense. That term first got used back in the days of the, of the Dallas Cowboys, where the quarterback was not under center. He was five yards deep. So a pistol's the same idea as a shotgun, except you have a running back behind the quarterback. So the quarterback's probably at about five yards depth and the running back is another two or three yards directly behind him. In this day and age where most teams on all offenses seem to be in the shotgun, you know, it doesn't mean you're totally committing to passing the ball. So a lot of teams will have a running back back there as well and they call that the pistol. Good. Thank you. Some of the names seem a little bizarre. Yeah. But well, they're going to kick. Yeah. Well, third and 20, I think you got to. Nice kick. Nice kick. What a spiral. Yeah, nice spiral kick. Kicks it down to the 16-yard line. There's Ronan again, brings it back up. We have a flag down there, though. That's David? A, that was a good kick, about a 40-yard yeah, yeah. kick down to the 20. Ronan Provisano had yeah. a good return to the right, but there was a flag back in the area that probably tells us it's going to be a hold or a block from behind, so that's going to come back. Nice. Holding against Cora. Well, this is what, seventh possession. We're going to see what happens here. Going to have a, a long way. Long drive, nine yards long drive yep. We're under two minutes to go in the uh, third quarter. As they say, we got a long drive here to see if they can keep maintain and keep up what they've been doing. There's well, that 83. Yep. Mr. Unknown, 83. Yep. yep. He got out to the outside real quick. Number 83 on the run. About a 22 yard gain. 22 yard gain. First down, Colts. Thanks, Oh, that's too bad. Oh. oh, he just, he just, guys are draped all over him. He just carries them along with him. Yeah, first and 10, Thibodeau gets the ball, easily picks up. When he, when he, when he gets seven yards, it's almost like a, a bad carry. I was just going to say a disappointment. A disappointment, yeah. But again, he had three people draped all over him and they couldn't yeah. bring him down. They're all up high. There he runs for his first down. Another run to the right, five yards, right, picks up the first down, yep. And they move the ball up to their 50. Down, and we're winding down to Probably the last play of the, the third quarter. There's 83 again running to the right. He likes that side. Yeah, you know what? We'd like to call his name, but yeah. we don't have it. So yeah, that's the third time they've run that slot yeah. reverse, and he got about 15 yards there. Yeah. So we come to the end of the third quarter. 
We're going to change ends. Coronel is going to have the wind at their backs. It's going to make it even more difficult for Jacob Hespler. And they're going to have first down going in from the 45. So, Peter, I'm in the process of putting together my top 10. I know, I know the fans are going to be waiting for this <laughs> with bated breath. I mean, I'm the first one to say that all these high school rankings are ridiculous, and here's why. Because unless you've seen all the teams play, how do you rank them? So I'm not, to me, it's not like, it's like, how, what's the difference between the 7th and the 10th team? It's all a little bit ridiculous. It's not like the NCAA Top 25 where everyone's seen the teams, there's all this data. People are voting on teams, many of them they haven't seen. So that being said, I'm going to create my own Top 10 and we'll, have, we'll release that at the end of the game. <laughs> another great run. Ronan Provenzano with another long run gets from the 45 yard line down to about the 15 yard line. You know, I'll give, I'll give Cora credit, David. I mean, they really have a balanced attack. Like it's, well, you know, it's getting all the credit, but well, they've got two or three guys they can hand off. Okay, balanced in the sense of different running yeah. backs. Not, not run pass, because no. Peter, no. they haven't passed yet. No. I know you know that. Yeah, but they are spraying the ball around. And again, this offensive line, you know, no offensive line gets enough credit. They're all, I mean, you take that job, you're all about creating someone else's success. That's right. And they've just done a tremendous, tremendous job. Like I said, other than Huron Heights, I can't think of another offensive line that has been this dominant uh, at any time during the year. So finally, there's a good tackle there by number 17, Liam Marsden. We've mentioned his name a few times today. And that's one of the first times today they've uh, the run has been stopped yeah. very quickly. It was only a three-yard gain. I think, Dave, going back to the rankings, there aren't very many people that have seen as many games in high school football than you. And uh, Yeah, which tells me I need to get, get another hobby. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know what? And I, I'm sure when it comes to the rankings, um, you know, uh, no one, everyone's heart is in the right place. But just to me, when trying to compare teams from different parts of even the country, that it, it's, it's pointless, Yeah. right? So... I'm glad we have these games. I think, though, anyone that saw Huron Heights play Laurier yesterday, no one could walk away from that thinking these aren't two great teams, if not the two best yep. teams, right? I mean, and if you're talking about the difference between the third and the fourth best team and stuff like that, you're really quibbling. There's, there's nothing of value in that. Bottom line is you had two undefeated teams yesterday, and uh, it went down the wire. Either one of them could have won. Yeah. I mean, I w you know, when you watch this game, you'd like to think that you'd like to see – See how Cora would fare against either yeah. one of those two teams. Yeah, well, again, in fairness, Cora did play Huron Heights, and Huron Heights beat them by 1.14 to 13. That would have been an amazing game to see uh, in, in retrospect because I can't imagine this Russian running game getting shut down, but obviously Huron Heights did that yeah. in such a tight game. So as we were talking there, uh, they rushed for another touchdown, and with the convert here, it'll be 45-14 in a second or two. And the convert was good. And again, they've kept up their record. We've had some we've had some games that that had some unfortunate results, but I, I kind of don't put this game in that particular category. Uh, I think we expect everyone expected a closer game. Yeah, um, I certainly did. But this is the most to me. This is the most dominant performance. Uh, certainly, we saw a couple other blowouts, but in both of those cases, the team that was on the other end of the blowout maybe wasn't the greatest team. No, Whereas. Here, you're seeing a team that was 12 and 0, uh, getting beat pretty, pretty profoundly. Yeah. Very true. So they've returned the ball to their their own 48, where they'll have first down. I 
I am really kind of amazed that, <coughs> like with this kind of weather we've had, how few injuries that we've had. Yeah, and that's you know amazed and also you know good. You know, knock on wood yeah. that uh, there hasn't been any serious injuries. Because as well as the injury to the flare, I mean these other guys having to stand around in the cold for a long delay yep. would have been very difficult. So there's that screen pass yeah. to the receiver again, and I don't know, Peter, if you saw that, but the running back out in motion there is making that block yeah, I, I, before the ball is caught. Yep. I saw that play too. I thought I was looking for the flag, but I mean the timing's key. It just seems to be before before it gets there. Yeah, just a little early. Anyway, the pass is complete. Six yard completion. Similar play, yeah, throws it, yeah. throws to the he side gets, there. He gets out of bounds, stops the clock. Catch, catch by number eight, Jensen Button. First down, shake up that And if you're Cora, you know, you're content to give up six yards, eight yards yeah. at a time down the field. I mean, you're up by 31 points. Yep, All you're telling you, I mean, if you look how, look at their DBs, how far off the line of scrimmage they are. All four defensive backs are 15 yards, 13 yep. to 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. And that's an incomplete pass. Yeah. Referee has lost his hat. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're Hespler and maybe you're thinking you want to throw deep, well, it's going to be difficult yeah. to attempt that, A, because you're throwing into a strong wind, and B, you got four, four guys. defensive backs in tremendous yeah. depth. I think they're, they're passing that the short passes to the sides are, are working. It's just that they're not getting a lot of yards with it. So here's a pitch, slot back reverse to uh, Chase Judge. That's the first time I think they've used that play today. And Judge is a really big weapon, had a tremendous season uh, all, all year for Hesper. And he picked up about six yards on that. Chase Judge picks up six yards. And it looks like Cora's calling timeout. Timeout, Now it looks like he's making the Cora coach call timeout. You know what? Okay, see what's happening here? I didn't notice this. They had a lot of subs in, Great and it's out. it's third and four. Now he's sending four of his starters back in. So I think I think he's getting. I think he does. I think he doesn't want to see another first down here. As I say, we have this uh, timeout, and we have 8.37 remaining on the clock, and it's, uh, again, Cora, 45, Jacob Hessler, 14. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, a lot of people, I think, would be shocked by that score. Not necessarily the Cora's winning, but that it would be this lopsided. Because, yeah. again, Hessler was 12-0. And, and, and although their, their division wasn't, wasn't the toughest, they, they dominated on offense, and they beat a very good resurrection team a couple weeks ago as well, putting 55 points on the board. And we've just really seen a, 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 an offense that has just controlled the complete game. Unstoppable. Yep. Seven possessions, seven scores. And even the field goal was, again, if you were suggesting maybe they weren't being a bit sure. Here we go. Third and four. Third and four. Deep pass. Well, that's that's, that's some pass interference. Yeah. And a great pass, you know, into that yeah. win. Yeah, that was. It was right on target. It was a deep pass down the left hand side yep. line intended for Jensen Button. The defensive back there, number 26. Uh, he didn't even turn his back. He just kind of ran straight into him and knocked him over. So that was an easy call for the official. Logan pass with the, you know, uh, I mean, and Jacob. It's Jacob uh, stepped back in the pocket there and uh, had a lot of confidence with that throw. Yeah. And, you know, pass interference in Canadian football is only a 15-yard penalty, right. so it doesn't hurt you as much as it does, like, say, in the NFL where it's a spot foul. Yeah. It's like it's right from the line of scrimmage. And yeah, because if that was a spot foul, it would be about 30 yards downfield yeah. instead yeah. of just 15.
see if we can they can keep up the momentum. It's got a man open. Liam Marsden with the reception. Yeah. It's gone to him a fair bit today. Yeah, Marsden's had a good game today, and every time he's yeah. had the ball, he's yeah. made at least one man miss. Yeah. Looks like he picked up 11 yards there. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to be. I was just going to say it. I thought it was a first down, and they were taking their time before they made their decision, but I it is a first down. Had a little heart attack there. The, the, the announcer there just scared me with that first down. That was, that was <laughs> so exuberant. Okay, pitch out to the right hand side. That's Quinn Springer on the run there, and I bet you, I bet you he hasn't even reached the 10 carry mark today, yeah. and that's a function of the time of possession and that Cora has maintained. And and we've got uh, an injury on the field. Yeah. Stops the clock, 7.41 remaining. Uh, Looks like he's trying to do push-ups yes, over there. Yeah, it was interesting. So he was ta Springer tackled after only a one-yard gain there. We need to maybe take this time to thank our sponsors uh, who have contributed to, uh, to the Office of Football Bowl Games, making a success and certainly helping out our convener. And a special thanks to Jim Barbeau, the, the Office of Project Coordinator for Football. James Clark is here from Chatham, Ontario. To, he's the chair of the Sports Advisory Committee. So it's great to see the support of, of you know, the Office of People, the, the University of Guelph personnel, and of course all the volunteers and teachers from the, the Kwasa area. So yeah. thank you very much, everybody. It takes a lot of people to make an event like this run well. And this has run very smoothly over the past three days. So Hesper is up over the ball. First down, or second down. Drop the pass, another swing pass to the right. He likes that pass to number 34. He hits uh, Springer in the backfield. Yeah. Short gain, only picked up about three, four yeah. yards. Another pretty key pick play here, Dave. Uh, third and seven, third and seven, third and six. I think our audience would love to see Hesper get a first down here or more. Yeah. Back to pass. Just a little overthrown. So Cora gains possession of that ball again and it'll have first down from uh, the 15. We have an injured uh, Cora player. The first aid personnel from Guelph are coming out onto the field to assist him. Seems to be okay as he's coming off the field. In high school football, when there's an injury, the player must come off the field for three plays. See what Cora has up their sleeve for this 
series of plays. Again, just moving the ball up the middle. Running for about seven or eight yards. There will be second down. Look at that quarterback sneak. I mean, all five linemen yep. had their men pushed about five yards downfield. So their quarterback picks up seven yards on that sneak where they only need about one or two. Both teams appear to be giving it their all with uh, at this stage of the game with uh, under six minutes to play, and the score is a point differential of almost uh, 30 points. So Peter, I'm almost ready with my with my. I know you've been my, working hard there. My top ten list. I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I hope it's not controversial. The last thing I want to do is offend anybody. Uh, but um, and, uh, and I'll preface it with again, uh, rankings mean nothing. It's just, rankings are just someone. They're just fun. You know what? You know it, it's fun. It, it it can create some good discussions and yep. arguments. But by no means, if I'm ranking one team fourth versus fifth. Should that be regarded as as a, a slap in the face to the team that's ranked a little bit? Lower? No, and we know that we know that uh, come next week that there will be some rankings out there yeah. Yeah. on the chat system. And well, one of, one other thing I will give a little preview: some of my teams in my top ten weren't here in the last few days, and that's that's recognition of the fact that uh, certain areas the football is extremely strong, yep. uh, most notably the city of London and uh, the city of Hamilton. Um, so there's going to be some representation from those two cities of teams that weren't here in the last three years. I don't think anybody that follows high school football would be, would be surprised at that, Dave. I yeah. think we know where the good pockets are in the province. Yeah. yeah. And because I can't make up my mind, I'm having a four-way tie for 10. So, <laughs> so, so I can include, just so I can include more teams. Yeah. Uh, you just let me know when you're ready to, to, yeah. to start that. Yeah. But. Again, second down here in six. Again, just run the ball up the gut. And I know that the, the Hespler uh, defense is doing their best and trying as best they possibly can to stop this potent offense, but they just are having trouble doing it. Yeah. And if you're, if you're Cora, I wonder if you're also thinking here, you know what? We want to have a game where we don't have to punt. We want to score on every drive, or at least take this down to the final whistle without having to punt. There's probably one discouraged player in the core, a team who hasn't had a chance to play yet. Yeah. Who's that? Unless it's the guy who kicks the punt, uh, kicks the oh, field the goals. The punter, you mean? The punter. Okay, here's that misdirection play, 28 oh, down the left sideline, Promisano. And he gets about, five, 10, about 30 yards. I agree with you. It'd be interesting to see the stats at the end of this game, just to see what what the two the two main runners have uh, been able to pick up it, today it's got to be over 500 yep. yards rushing and no yards passing and no yards <laughs> we have to keep saying that eh? no yards passing yeah you know yeah see if we were negative if we were negative people we would we would talk about how how pathetic their passing <laughs> attack is how they've gained no yards but you got to emphasize the positive yep. side, that is a new quarterback in there So he can say that has many passing yards as a starter. Oh, oh. oh, there's a fumble on the exchange. So one of the jokes I made, so one of our wide receivers at Laurier, uh, Ethan Jordan, was all Canadian. And he had an incredible season. But I was joking with him because I tell him that I had more yards receiving than him in the playoff game because he had, like, minus two yards. <laughs> <laughs> right? And he's such a great kid. You know, he can laugh at it. He can get such a great player. He didn't even dress last year, and this year he was all Canadian. Really? So wow. What, a, what an incredible player. And, you know, our offense is really young, and we're really looking forward to him and some other guys coming back. I bet. Yeah. So the new quarterback is Eric Martone. Yeah, he feels a little bit better now after that first play. Ramazano again with two lead blockers out in front. And, again, he gets down to the three-yard line. <coughs> There's two and a half minutes left. So I'm going to start my, my – again, the world is waiting for this, my top ten list. <laughs> So here we go. We, we don't have any drums here to roll oh, for. Okay. Okay. So, 
tied for 10th because I want to be inclusive and have more teams and you're tied for 10th I have four teams Notre Dame Welland Meyer from Niagara Falls Westmount from Hamilton and Corpus Christi which were the winners in uh, Halton Catholic uh, number nine despite their number nine despite their performance today is the Hesper Hawks number eight I have the Cardinal Newman from Hamilton they lost to uh, Bishop Tonos Number seven, I have Aquinas from London. They lost in their regional final to uh, Laurier. Number six, uh, Bell River, uh, who lost today to the number five team, in my opinion, Frontenac. And we'll continue in a minute. Oh, he was stopped. Looked like he was going to be able to break through for another touchdown, but they got stopped. Yeah, that was a really nice tackle yep. by Kenyon oh, Dalton. Kenyon Dalton hammered him at about the two-yard line. And we've got about two minutes and 13 seconds left. At number four, we're going to have Bishop Tonos, who could quite argue they had the toughest schedule uh, in the province in terms of the teams they played. I would say they had seven quality wins, which I don't think any other team could say. Seven wins against really good opponents. And he's in for a touchdown. So we're down to our we're down to our top three, and I'm gonna even you know to me it's it maybe should be tied for two, uh, second. But I'm gonna put Huron Heights third and Cora second. I know Huron Heights beat Cora near the start of the year, 14-13, but uh, Cora's Cora's performance today has just been dominating in terms of all 18 teams we've seen here. I don't think any team has looked more impressive in terms of their dominance against the opposition. Yeah. And uh, number one, of course, we're gonna we're gonna give to Laurier. Uh, you know, again, in a very tight game with Huron Heights. If Huron Heights wins that game, then I'm flipping number three and number one. So there we go. I think that's a fair fair assessment. By all extensive purposes, that clock should run now. Yeah, we have the rule when we get to 35 points or more, we run the clock, and it's at 38 minutes. Uh, 38 points with a minute 53 left, and if you're the Hesper coaches, I don't think you're going to mind if they run the clock. So again, it was a really good event, you know, nine games. It's tough to have nine tight matches. Uh, we had five really close games. A couple of games that anticipated were going to be close uh, turned out not to be. But again, I think in, in terms of, I think what people will be talking about, about this year's Wolf Festival more than anything is, uh, well, I mean, the amazing game between Huron Heights and Laurier <coughs> and Cora's absolute dominance today. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think for every athlete that's participated in, in the Office of Bowl Games, it's, it's something they'll never forget. Yeah. Um, we we kind of think that kids don't really care, but I think they do. Yeah. They participated. and So now the clock is running. We're winding down close to a minute now. Yeah, and again, the clock's only going to stop now if there's an injury. And I don't think Hespler is going to try and run a no huddle or anything like that. They're just going to take their time. Maybe they'll get in two or three plays, and uh, this will this will end. So, Dave, I just want to thank you for allowing me to have this experience. Yeah, thank you, Peter, too. I mean, we've known each other a few years, and this is the first time we've had a chance to work together in the booth. It's been uh, good. I mean, we both got to partner up with someone else today, mm -hmm. and um, finishing together was a good way to do it. And, again, I'd like to also thank... Uh, the crew from the previous two days, Dwayne Cameron, former coach at Laurier, current linebackers coach with the Calgary Stampeders, and Jack Moore, who also played at Laurier and is now the voice of the Kitchen Rangers. Uh, they did a great job doing six games over two days. So we, we had big shoes to fill. Yeah, we did. So Probably running down here to our last play. Swing pass to Quinton Springer. He picked up the first down. And we got a oh, they're going to finish the game off in style. Deep pass. Incomplete. Incomplete. To Jensen Button. I don't know if they're going to give him one more play. Yeah. Probably be a matter if they even want it. Yeah, no, I just would think that, no, the referee's going to, yeah. Vito's going to just yeah. signal that. Yeah. So, again, thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our, our uh, presentation tonight. And... Uh,
you know, the teams will be lining up now for the uh, presentation of the the pennant for the Northern Bowl. And again, this is uh, CORE's fourth consecutive uh, championship. And I don't think they've won any in this much of a dominating fashion. No, no. And again, I want to repeat for the people at home, this is a really good team they beat. They beat a team that was 12-0. Yep. Okay, so Peter, I guess we're going to wrap it up there then? Yep. Okay, so this is uh, Peter Morris and David Morris. He's saying goodbye from the 2022 Offs of Bowl Festival, and maybe see you next year.